Hello again from Digicore Things. A few years ago, when I was rediscovering my original digital electronics design and breadboard prototyping background, I decided there was a need for a better LED indicator solution. As most enthusiasts know, it's quite common to hook up LEDs to your digital or microprocessor based creations to easily see the status at key points within your circuit. Often, dual inline LED bar displays are used for displaying the state of parallel data and address buses, or even individual register contents. Now, although we love flashing lights and enjoy plenty of digital signal and register content visibility, there are a couple of problems with doing this. Firstly, it seems quite common to simply hook up an LED to a signal line, which we wish to monitor for our current limiting resistor. This, unfortunately, has the effect of significantly loading the signal that we are monitoring, quite often beyond the datasheet's maximum source or sync current specification. In addition, if you add a number of LEDs to your creation, you can significantly add to your project's overall power consumption also creating unplanned voltage drops across your breadboard's power feed wiring. Secondly, hooking up multiple LEDs and current limiting resistors onto your circuit can be quite a tedious process, with all of the resistors and hookup wires needed just to monitor a multi-bit bus or register. So this is where the DigiCore Things 8-bit LED thing comes to the rescue. It solves all of these issues along with adding some cool additional capabilities. On first look, the 8-bit LED thing is a breadboard friendly 8-bit LED bar display in a wider 16-pin dual inline package. It is the same length as a dual inline 16-pin IC package with a 0.5-inch width. You can even place them end-to-end -end on your breadboard to make a 16-bit or wider LED bar display. You might say, huh? Why don't I just use a regular dual inline 16 pin 8 LED bar display? Well, if you did, you would then need 8 current limiting resistors, additional wiring, and face the signal loading and other issues I've just discussed. The secret behind the 8 bit LED thing is that it actually contains the brains of a tiny microcontroller, making it a little smarter than your average LED bar display. Firstly, to use it for displaying the status of up to 8 digital signals, you only need to connect up the two power pins, that is ground and your project's 5V or 3.3V power line. Then up to 8 digital signals can be monitored just by connecting to any of the 8 pins along one side of the 8-bit LED thing. Now, apart from the ease of connection and no need for current limiting resistors, the magic here is that each input presents as only a 1 microamp load to the signal being monitored. Yes, I said that correctly, only 1 microamp. Effectively, there is no load impact on the monitored signal. This is due to the fact that these sensing inputs are actually floating, so there is no pull-up or pull-down resistors adding load or having any impact on your circuit. However, because of this, do note that if any of the 8 digital level sensing inputs remain unused, then they should be tied to ground. To demonstrate, I'll grab a resistor bank and I'll actually tie the resistor bank to ground. This will pull down the signals. Then if I apply power, we don't see any LEDs on, but if I then get a jumper and connect it to 5 volts, you can see as I jumper each input pin, the LED lights up. In addition to this ease of use, 
virtually no load on the signals being monitored. The display is also efficient as all the illuminated LEDs are Charlieplexed. Now this is only the start of the 8-bit LED thing's capabilities. You see, this is just the 8-bit LED thing operating in its default mode. And there are another 7 modes of operation. You see, on the other side of the display, we have some more pins. You already know about the ground and power pins. There are also two pins to support microcontroller programming. In addition, there are also three mode control input pins. These mode pins have internal weak pull-ups enabled. So by default, with the pins not connected, we are in mode 7, with all three mode pins pulled high. So, mode 7 is the default 8-pin digital level signal monitoring mode. By controlling the mode pins, we can switch to other modes including a mode that even turns the 8-bit LED thing into a dice. There are also various scanning display modes. All are explained on the handout that comes of the 8-bit LED thing. One common use would be to just pull the mode 1 pin, M1, low to cause the LED bar display to be a sweep scanner, like the Knight Rider car of the 80s TV series fame, for indicating periods when your project is in standby, as an example. But I'm sure you can use your own imagination. Here's the scanner example. If I connect to ground and connect M1 pin, there you go. Scanning mode. I've actually been using a number of these 8-bit LED things with my own projects for several years now without previously offering them as a solution for others to use. You see, I designed and tweaked them before COVID hit, but just when I was happy that they were complete and ready for others to use, COVID hit the global supply chain, and the price of the microcontroller chips went up tenfold. Recently, I revisited making another batch, and I found that the component prices had come back down. So the 8-bit LED thing was once again cost viable to offer for other users to have as much fun with as I've had. As an aside, the 8-bit LED thing also made a fun design project as they also represent the physically smallest microcontroller project I've ever made. You can also consider the 8-bit LED thing as simply a tiny SDM8 microcontroller board which you could also program for your own projects. As such, I've decided to offer these in kitset form. So you have the choice of using the bare MCU board for your own use, or you can simply solder on the supplied LED bar display and the gold-plated route pin header strips to complete your own 8-bit LED thing. I've also added an assembled option where I can assemble them for you for a small fee. I've managed to now make these available on my Tindy store and because it's common to use multiple of them on your breadboard projects, I know I do, I'm offering a 4 up price so you can have 4 for a reduced bundle price. For fun, I thought I'd also show you the testing jig that I made to allow me to program and fully test each PCB prior to shipping or before the final LED bar display plus header pin assembly. To program the microcontroller, you can simply use an SD-Link version 2 USB programmer which is connected to the board with just four wires. These are ground, power, reset and the SD single pin SWIM interface. SWIM stands for Single Wire Interface Module. If you don't already have an ST-Link version 2 programmer and you want one to play around with programming the microcontroller yourself, I'll offer as an option the same ST-Link V2 compatible USB programmer that I'm using, so you can get one with your 8-bit LED thing from my Tindy store. Okay, so here is my 8-bit LED thing programmer and test jig. I first made a 3D printed design 
inspired by the clip-based pogo pin programmers which I saw available online. Here's one that I designed in Fusion 360. But after finalising the design, I decided I wasn't happy with that approach. You see, as it is a clip design, with just one spring, the pogo pins do not remain perpendicular as you open and close the clip. This is not ideal. So I went about making a two spring design that would nicely raise and lower the pins in a constantly perpendicular fashion. I was dreaming up a lever mechanism for raising and lowering the test pins, but then I thought it would be much easier to simply use a thread and a wing nut. So after some design tweaking, here is what I ended up with. The good thing is that this has formed the basis for several different product testers. Here's an example of one of the testers for my TL866 EEPROM adapter PCBs. You'll note I even used an 8-bit LED thing on this tester for showing the test results. It just uh, mounts here. For the Duke design, the top part is identical on all of the testers, and the bottom is simply customised to match the PCB outline of the device being tested. Using the PCB outline for the base shape makes it very easy to line up each PCB for testing. The design also means it's very easy to correctly assemble the tester's pogo pins. I simply need to insert the pogo pins through their mounting holes, bolt the tester PCBs in place on the top piece, and then with the tester tightened down, the free pogo pins nicely drop against the PCB outline base on the bottom piece. It's then simply a case of soldering the top of the pins to the tester PCB and they are all automatically in the perfect position to allow the PCB thickness of the PCB being tested to compress the pogo pins on insertion. So let's demonstrate the programming and testing of an 8-bit LED thing board. First I'll insert a new 8-bit LED thing microcontroller PCB. Tighten down the pogo pins. Then I plug in the SD Link programmer to my USB port. Then with the SD Visual Programmer software, I just need to hit Control P to initiate programming. On success, I can then disconnect and reconnect the ST-Link USB connection to reset the board and we can now test. You'll note I have a jumper on the middle mode selection pin, M1, which has the 8-bit LED thing sweep scanning the display. This initially tests the middle mode pin and all LEDs. I can then move the jumper across to the third mode pin for a single LED scanner. And finally, the first mode pin which activates the LED dice mode. And we have two. There are a total of eight modes, but we only need to test that each of the three mode select pins are working. Finally, with all the mode pins open, we are in the default mode 7, via the internal pull-ups, where the eight inputs on one side are used for logic level sensing. I have a pull-up resistor bank on the testing board, so by default all LEDs are on. By jumpering each of the eight pins to ground, 
I can test the LED goes off. which confirms each of the eight inputs are working correctly. And we're done. Releasing the wing nut allows the PCB to drop out, ready for testing the next PCB. So, in summary, here is an assembled 8-bit LED thing. And here are the three components of the kitset version. The surface mount device assembled, programmed and tested microcontroller board. A 16-pin 8 LED bar display and a 20-pin gold-plated round pin header strip. For cutting into the 8-pin, 4-pin and 3-pin strips you need for a final assembly. To assemble you simply need to first solder in the LED bar display, noting that pin 1, as indicated on the PCB, is the beveled corner of the LED display. Then, just solder on the header strips to create your completed 8-bit LED thing, ready to light up your projects with no other parts or current limiting resistors needed. If you'd like one, or a few, please visit my Tindy store. I hope you have as much fun with the 8-bit LED thing as I have. That's it. Thanks for watching.